great to be here in Melbourne up from Hobart with Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree. Welcome back to Australia. Thank you very much. Good to be here. How's it been since you uh, you last in Australia? Did you get a chance to see around Australia much? Well, the, the, unfortunately, the, the only two times we've been to Australia, we've, we've really been doing a kind of whistle-stop you know, show, fly, show, fly, show, fly home. And it's been the same this time. Um, we did have a little bit of time off in Brisbane, so we went to see the koalas at the koala sanctuary, which is really, really amazing, actually. Um, but I'm afraid to say that the, the, tr- the full Australian experience will probably have to wait until another, another time. Summer day In Garland's we also have to congratulate you for uh, Classic Rock Presents Prog Magazines voted you as progressive icon of 2009. Congratulations for that. How do you feel about that? I don't know what that means, but I mean it's, it's nice. It's, it's nicer for my mum than it is for me. My mum likes those sorts of things. Uh, but yes, it's, it's very flattering, obviously, yeah. A lot of the info that we read about Porcupine Tree, it's been a, a long evolution of the band over the last 20 years or so. H- how do you think since Porcupine Tree has been in Australia last time, how have you evolved since Fear of a Blank Planet? Well, I think it, there's a sense of wanting every album to somehow be distinct uh, within the body of work, distinct from every other album. So... This idea of repeating ourselves is, is not, you know, it's kind of anathema to us. And I think there's always a sense of trying to set um, a goal with each record. Now, the goal with this record was to create effectively an album length piece of music and to try to create a 55, I mean, I didn't have any idea how long it was going to be at the time, but certainly a 45 minute plus continuous musical journey. And that's very different to Fear of a Blank Planet because Fear of a Blank Planet was really all about lyrics. It was all about the concept. I had the, I had the title, I had the, the lyrical ideas long before I'd written even a note of music. And I think that tended to give that album a very um, lyric-heavy feeling. It was a very difficult album to engage with without engaging with the lyrics and without the concept, I think. This album, not so much. I think the incident is more about the musical journey. And so that is different, and that, that's allowed, I think, the, the band, the musicians in the band to, to have more space to allow their ideas to breathe and their musicianship to breathe. So it, it's become, I think, another in a, in a sort of a string of albums which are all very distinct in their own right. Um, I, don't know, I don't necessarily know if it's um, an evolution or just simply something different. You know, I think there's a sense that the band are always looking with every album to reinvent themselves. You know, to keep it interesting for ourselves as much as anything, I've, I've never really been interested in the idea of, of re- repeating myself. It gets boring, you know, so... Um, some people prefer... Well, there's always a sense that some people will prefer, you know, a band to stay the way they are, you know, not to evolve. And I think Porcupine Tree fans have to get used to the fact that every time we make a record, we will have kind of shifted the goalposts and done something slightly different. So we say you have to expect the unexpected. So I'm not sure how many shows you've done since the Incident Tour began, but in all honesty, how, how much are you uh, still enjoying, after, after producing the albums yourself as well, yeah. how much are you still enjoying actually getting up there and playing the album? Last couple of nights I've really enjoyed it. I think, I think there's been a break. Uh, the fact, I think there's, the fact there's been a break has been uh, a factor in that. I'll be the first to admit that, that after the three months that we did it between September and December. By the end, I was kind of, not going through the motions, but, you know, there's always this um, feeling uh, that you want to give the audience that have paid the money or taken the trouble to come and see you a night they'll never forget. But you don't always feel up for it yourself. So that's where the kind of professionalism kicks in. It's okay, you, it's like a job, but I don't want to feel like it's a job. You know, I want to feel really engaged with the music myself. And, and 
in realistically, there's no way for it to be that way every single night. There simply isn't. You know, you don't feel like going to work every day. It's the same for a band. You know, we don't feel like going on stage every day. Um, but I have to say, in the last couple of nights, we've had a couple of breaks. The Australian audiences are so terrific and so vibey that it's been actually really a lot of fun to play to play the incident. That's because you don't come here enough. Well, you know, but you know, sometimes that that is a factor. We, we, we tour America a lot. We tour Europe a lot, and we've toured a lot of the same venues, you know, for, for 10 years now, certainly the same cities. And so there is a sense of, you know, um, predictability about it. But Australia uh, was a surprise to us when we came here last year, or the year before last now. Uh, it was a surprise to us that we had any fans here at all. And we've had that a few times over the last few years. The first time we went to Mexico, first time we went to Russia, first time we went to India. We went to India just before Christmas. We were amazed and shocked to find people that had been listening to our music for, for sometimes for years, like you guys. And, and that is surprising and, it, and it, it keeps, in a way, it keeps the job interesting for us because one of the great things for me about the job that I do is I do get to see the world and I get to travel as a professional, as a musician. I get to meet fans, I get to experience different cultures. I did, I've made so many friends all over the world. And it's such a great way to see the world as a musician. The best way to see the world, really.